I have many wonderful memories of growing up on the 100 block of Spring Street on Syracuse's north side. Grandma and Grandpa built two houses, one at 117 and a second at 127, where they lived when I was born. For years, all of their daughters raised their families on the same block. Aunt Fanny bought a house on the other side at 132. Aunt Clara and Aunt Edith lived at 117. Aunt Norma lived with Grandpa and Grandma at 127, and we lived upstairs. It was a wonderful time to grow up. All of my cousins, there were 16 of us, played in the street and raided Grandma and Grandpa's garden of tomatoes, pears, figs, and grapes. And every Sunday, we all had dinner together at Grandma and Grandpa's. And of course, every holiday. Christmas was my favorite. To me, Christmas was magical, and it wasn't because of Santa Claus and presents. My parents were very strict and didn't put importance on lots of gifts. We actually only got one gift each, but boy, did we cherish that gift. No, I would have to say that the magic of Christmas for me were the traditions of Christmas Eve at 127 Spring Street. I've wondered why that was so meaningful, and I've come to the conclusion that it was the sense of sharing and a feeling of belonging that I think went along with the understanding that we were carrying on traditions from the old country, as we used to call it. We all know that with Italians, most everything centers around family and food. Yes, we have embraced this tradition, and most of us love to cook. But you know, Italians don't just cook, they create wonderful specialties, especially at Christmas. I knew that at Christmas, in keeping the tradition of the seven fishes, Grandma would bake a large pan of bacala and potatoes smothered in tomato sauce. My favorite was fried smelt, which we dipped in vinegar. We had calamari several ways, in sauce and stuff. Anchovies appeared in several dishes. My mother continued the tradition of making the pasta gels, wonderful little pastries. Grandma's version of pasta gels seemed to be unique to her village, Montecovino Ravella, just south of Salerno. They're not too sweet or rich, but filled with pear paste, made weeks in advance. A paste of boiled crushed chestnuts, ground roasted filberts, melted chocolate, and a little black coffee. They are fried and glazed with honey and colored sprinkles when they're cooled. What makes these treats so special is that they are only made at Christmas. It wouldn't have seemed right to have them at any other time. One by one, everyone in the family would make their way to the basement in the early years where Grandma and Grandpa were frying on Christmas Eve. We all knew that Zeppelin's tasted best right out of the hot oil, so we'd wait our turn as Grandma scooped out half of a handful of sticky dough and plopped it into the hot, hot oil. Someone else, Grandpa or one of my aunts, would stand by the sizzling pot of oil and gently move the Zeppelin around so they wouldn't stick to each other. I was to learn that this was a delicate operation. Grandma and Grandpa would fire off instructions in their broken English. It's important to make sure that each piece of softly formed dough, some were round and some were elongated, were golden brown on the outside and thoroughly cooked on the inside, which I was to find out you only learn with experience. I loved all of the traditional foods, but the frying of the zeppelas, that was my favorite tradition and the one that I have carried on. And each year, as I prepare to make the dough, which is very different consistency than the traditional fried dough that is so well known today, I think of my grandmother, remembering how she taught me how to get it just the right consistency and how pleased she was that I wanted to learn. Add a little water or add a little flour, or maybe it just needs to be kneaded more. Knead it, knead it, knead it until it's smooth. I learned just the way she taught me to judge these things by the feel of the dough. I understood even then that behind all of these family traditions, the real reason we celebrated Christmas was the observance of the sacred holy day. My grandfather was very artistic and loved to make things. He made each of his daughters a stable for their nativity scenes. He put real straw on the roof of the stable and in the crib where the baby Jesus lay. This made a real impression on me and beautifully brought to life the story of the birth of Christ. I understood that in our house, 
This was the real reason we celebrated Christmas. My mother and my aunts remember that Grandpa made a winter village scene that took up half of the front room with houses, waterfalls, a skating rink made out of a mirror, and bridges that were made out of shoe leather with nails as their rungs or rails. By the time I came along, we needed the room to accommodate for our growing family. At the end of this evening, we celebrated the solemnity of this holy day with the Italian-American parishioners of Our Lady of Pompeii Church. Still today, I remember the anticipation and excitement of staying up for midnight mass with its majestic sounds of the choir, the church decorated with deep red poinsettias, and all of us schoolchildren marching around the church singing Tu scende dalle stelle. I was yet to understand how special this simple song was to my grandparents and how keeping their traditions meant so much to them. Recreating Christmas and the memories they brought here from Montecovino Ravella, nestled in the green hills near Salerno. The melody and the original lyrics of Tuscende dalle Stelle were written by a prominent Neapolitan priest, St. Alfonso Maria de Liguria. Tuscende dalle Stelle, from starry stars descending, thou comest, glorious king. A manger low thy bed, and winter's icy sting. O my dearest child most holy, shuddering, trembling in the cold. Great God, thou lovest me. What suffering thou didst bear, that I did near thee might be. Mm -hmm. 